Hello, my friends. Welcome. Happy Monday. It's Moon Day. The cosmology program has always been something that's really fascinated me. I started studying officially at the IHGS in 2017. And I know it's something that maybe you've already gone into because you can study this on your own with Ra if it's correct for you to do so. But if you want to take this material out into the world and become a teacher, you're in the right place. You know, for many of us, our initial experience of human design is practical type strategy and authority so that we can make better decisions. You know, that's what human design is all about. And when you first come to know your design and particularly study your design, you start to realize, wow, this thing goes really deep. There's so many different keynotes. And besides experimenting with the practical application of how this knowledge can bring you understanding confidence, self-love, self-realization, self-appreciation, and not only that, from the perspective of being able to earn a clean living. I loved it when I heard Ross say that it's a clean living. And me being back in the day, uh, so um, self-deprecating and very low self-esteem, I wasn't very proud of what I was doing at the time. When human design came to me, you know, I was very embarrassed, didn't tell anybody what I did. Had two separate lives, really. And now, after the years, the decade of deconditioning and awakening to the uniqueness of self, it's so much fun to explore new avenues, have new adventures in the human design system. And so we're ready to rock and roll. And in the beginning, of studying human design, you recognize there's so many different keynotes. So we're going to explore tons and tons more keynotes if you're ready for more keynotes, um, more mystical avenues or adventures. You know, Ra was given human design by a voice. That's how he could interpret through his design the material that was bombarding him. So the formula for the human design system, this rabbit hole goes so deep and in this particular course, he did his cosmological areas of the knowledge that he felt weren't as practical. Gray Matt called them courses in that, you know, there's no proof for a lot of these really esoteric things. There are some really practical applications here in this knowledge that I'll talk to you about, tell you about what you can do if you decide to become a teacher. But you don't have to become a teacher in order to take advantage of the cosmology avenues. You can just use it for yourself if you're somebody who's really interested in the mystical and esoteric realms, as I have been my whole life. As a kid, I was a, a junkie in those bookstores, you know, always in the back where all the mystical and esoteric stuff was. So beyond our human experience, that's where we're going now rave cosmology or human design cosmology it's seven courses if you buy the course from Ra, and as a student you get a discount on the entire course if you want it so just let me know so i can help get that arrangement for you and that would give you besides our classes to train you to be a teacher Ra's most in-depth elaboration of the mystical and esoteric teach teachings that human design has to offer completely um, new relative to the world. There is some repeating patterns of things, as I've noticed in my studies over the years. But as you know, human design, basically, in the first 18 years, he focused on the empirical. He said, don't believe me, don't trust me, try it for yourself, test it for yourself. This mechanical knowledge can be tested by every single one of us in our own lives. And he didn't want to be worshipped as a guru or placed on a pedestal. I don't either. It's not about being able to believe something, but more of the try it and see. And as messengers of the knowledge, I am, he was, and you too, if you're taking this out into the world, remember to be practical. The most important thing is that you're practical so that you're able to turn around your investment and not only make a clean living, 
as Rawls promise was to us. Once you let go of anything that's holding you back from embracing this as your primary source of income, but also to be able to expand your awareness about how the entire Maya works, not just the human design mechanics. Ross said, quote, nothing has concerned me more than the legitimacy of this knowledge. It is why it is so important for me to explore the depths of design and personality to get to the very core and foundation of the knowledge. This is a true science and it is a miracle science. And I'm really pleased that you're here with me to help engage with this material so that we can move forward together with confidence and explore and learn. And of course, you know me, share, discover all of these fun things. <laughs> all right, board. Okay. So there's me. I'm a differentiation degree practitioner. There's my rave cosmologist teacher certification. I started, as I mentioned, in 2017, and I wasn't able to take the final training until 2022 because of varying reasons. But from the perspective of me going through this material with you, I am supported by some incredible people, most notably uh, most of you in my analyst training know her. Katja has been diligently creating incredible presentations, and I'm very excited to go through this with her support because she has the capability of transmitting and empowering us to make sense of the human design system knowledge with her incredible detailed direction. I couldn't do any of this without her support. So just a huge congratulations to Katja for being such an amazing transmitter and also a deep appreciation for my teachers, not only Ra, of course, but Darshana Deborah Matthews and Andrea Rekel Wolf at the IHDS. So you can take these classes at IHDS and you might even have already taken a few. From the perspective of the Rave Cosmology Teacher Training Certification Program, we, with me, we're going to begin in January, just a couple weeks from now. And you can attend any of these courses as long as you've taken rave cartography. So in order to get certified, I will be teaching seven courses, all seven. We're all doing it through package pricing. The basic payments of the course can be made only if you write to office at humandesignlifecoaching.com. We had a lot of defaults in the last year for payment programs. And so we're only doing payments for established students. So if we know you, this package can be prorated if you've already finished one of the required courses. So you actually get the audit with me for free because we'll credit you whatever course you've already paid, the early bird price on whatever course you've already taken at IHGS, so long as you really have taken it and passed it. Okay. So I don't teach the final certification class. Basically what that is, is a review of all of the modules, all of the classes, and then you're going to deliver personal services, whatever your choice is. I happened to do the mystical way analysis for my husband, and you can see that as an example. If you search the humandesign.live area, the general area, and see what that's like. So Darshana will teach another one of these um, certification classes. And as long as you've completed all seven courses, done your homework, then you're going to be able to get certified too and share this knowledge with the world. The world does need more cosmologists because there are some really critical services in this program that you can start to deliver, even if you're not certified as an analyst. So I repeat, you do not have to get your analyst certification in order to become a cosmology teacher. That's really unique in our industry in that all the other advanced like family practice, child development, a lot of the other advanced materials, DDP, you have to be an analyst first before you get your certification. 
So with cosmology, you just go straight from cartography into cosmology. So as you know, Lavina likes to add bonus materials. I'll probably, um, depending on who's in our courses, see a place where there might be a gap that can be filled by some of my recordings from um, analyst training, if that is something that is required or needed, because I see that you aren't in analyst training because you're not interested in analyst training. I'll explain a, a little bit more why that might be as we move through what a cosmology teacher is. Every other teacher trainer program actually requires that you're an analyst for a while before you become, let's say, an ABCs teacher or a cartography teacher. So again, completion of all eight courses and the prerequisites will result in a RAVE cosmologist teacher certification. So that means you can teach this anywhere you want. You can do all kinds of um, little workshops on all of the material. And there are no, um, what is the word that they use? Royalties. You don't have to pay any royalties if you're an independent teacher out there in the world with cosmology. So that's another benefit. So you can have the full freedom to do whatever it is that you like. So again, the prerequisites to enter into this course are rave cartography, the required material, rave cosmology, those ebooks, and the recommended material is RAW's direct self-study courses. That would be the audio if you want it. You don't have to have it because you're going to have the rave cosmology ebooks. If you're a reader, go with the ebooks. If you don't read, listen to raw. The best way to learn is to listen to raw and read at the same time while you're highlighting. If you're uh, logic and um, very visually stimulated and strategic, test yourself afterwards. We'll do our best with the materials to see how we can um, really ingrain it into not only our lives, but our practices so that we can further spread the knowledge of cosmology. So that's this is where you're, because you're not registering at IHGS, you're registering with me. This is where I need to, if you want the discount on the courses, um, you need to let me know so that I can arrange that for you. Okay. So this is a new mythology. It's a new way of understanding relative to the human experience, human design or rave cosmology is a new way of understanding with full comprehension how one came to be in the world, the eternal nature of being related to time, and the energy dynamics of what we are encountering, the not just mechanics of the Maya, of an individual Maya, as we learn in analyst training, but this is also about the comprehension of the greater totality of the all that is as much as we can understand with these human being brains that we have and the ability to have um, comprehension of how everything works, not just here and now in this life, as we see with the mystical way or mystical journey or profile purpose and function, how our Profiles, those 12 basic profiles, are so much more nuanced and layered. The true profiles, you could say, relative to our human experience. But there's also a service of finding one's fixed star, the eternal um, direction of where you came from, where we're headed back home to. Interesting paradox there. And then also... If you are interested in death, dying, and bardo, that is another thing that can be studied and offered as a service. So being able to understand how these things work from the perspective of the death and dying stages, if that is something interesting for you, you can even, you know, be, let's say you're really a, what do they call it? It's like a midwife but the other way around, like a hospice person, you know, helping people make their transition peacefully, gracefully, more easily. So there's all different kinds of ways that we can understand how the mystical or esoteric realms really work. And 
the material is Ra's most in-depth mystical training, period. So doula, thank you, Eva. That's the word I was looking for, a doula, a death doula. Oh, what a beautiful gift that must be. I remember volunteering at hospice when I was young. It was very, very hard, and I didn't last very long. But I took the training, and who knows, someday, if it's invited, we'll see. So let's dive into, look at all these wonderful courses. We're going to go through them in the order that they're listed. Bantu, Brahma's Long Night, 2027, Nature of the Stars, the Mystical Ways, Death Dying Bardo, Profile Purpose and Function. Now that's the order that Ra taught them. We're going to do it in a slightly different order. You go through the materials however it is that you prefer. Completely fine relative to um, your self-studies. So in the Rave Cosmology, these Bantu plates and Brahma's Long Night and Beyond, these are the ones that I feel are the most uh, grim as far as the courses are concerned. If you're interested in the heart of Rave Cosmology, that's where the Bantu is at, where we explore the mythology and the mechanics of the biverse as it was transmitted to Ra by the voice. Did you know that we each carry an aspect of the original design crystal? You're going to learn how that affects your search for love relative to your human design. And then if you've ever heard about the camel and the dog, the center, all of us are um, affected by these elements. The center, the camel and the dog, they dwell within the sun. So how do they function and what role do they play? You're going to find it's a critical role and effect they, ha they have on humans. We're also going to touch upon the 16 faces. So you'll learn which of the 16 faces of the gods you originated from and what role your fractal relationships take on in your life. We're also going to talk about the 66 signs, how the stars create a fractal line for the transmission of information and which star you were born under, giving us a teaser for the fifth stars, nature of the stars in another course. And there's a very special, important thing to understand about people who are born between 1936 and 1941. So you're going to learn the part that those people play in conveying information from the center within the sun. And also, we're going to find out the links to what cannot be known or discover how the shattering of the bond and the two primary crystals of consciousness seeds the expanding universe with its potential to receive and filter the consciousness field. So really critical, interesting information. So there's the order of our lecture. So not only all of the things that we mentioned, some really important pieces about the monopole, the primary magnetic monopole, and why this planet actually is the planet of suffering. We're going to be talking about the death and reincarnation of Sirius. Now with Brahma's Long Night, this one, we'll talk about more of the big, huge picture view regarding humanity. Does humanity as we know it have a future? You're going to learn that here. And we're going to talk about the end of a cycle. Not only investigating cycles from the big picture viewpoint, as in global cycles, but also talk about humanity's role within these cycles. And if you were ever curious about Ra's take on global warming, you're going to learn what it means that the program instead of humanity, is actually responsible for the breakdown. This ending and beginning, it's a round that we're in. How does the round end and what actually begins afterwards? So it can sound like science fiction, but when it comes to 
going about making this transition between where we are now and 2027. We're going to learn about the bizarre science. Is it fiction? We don't know. This is what Rob said, the voice said. So this stuff is the stuff we're like, wait, what? Really? Oh my God, the world is falling apart. So we are custodians of a deep mechanical misunderstanding that we're going to be able to make more clear to our clients or anybody that is interested once you yourself start teaching this material out in the world too. So whether you do it on podcasts so that you can advertise your services, um, whether you do your own podcast or YouTube page, you're going to have the freedom to create information because you're a certified IHDS cosmologist. And when we're locked into the program, you know what that means if you are an analyst in training. But from the perspective of understanding the locks and keys, some of you might recall that in one of my cycles, I did a bonus on locks and keys. What does it mean to carry an aspect of the global lock or the keys to this age that we're en exiting and the new age that we're entering. So there's going to be a lot of uh, changes in the upcoming years. 2027 is when that program changes. So you're going to learn what will change when the program is no longer interested in humans. So here's the class content, the history of the round, the cycle of the Phoenix contagion and explanation. The Apocalypse of Ra Uruhu, the Night of Brahma, Oberon and the Reconstitution, the Aaron, the Foundation of the Expression of the Totality. The Aaron is a hardwired code. And then talking about Oberon and the child. Hint, it's a fetus, actually, not the child. But more poetic sounds better, hey, to say the child. The universe is but a child. The biverse is but a child. And we are all dreams within that dream of what is happening relative to the mystical elements of cosmology. Now, we're going to talk next about the 2027. And this is actually where we've decided to land or start because of how close we are relative to the shift or the change that's happening. You know, it's just a couple more years. So will humans become raves? You're going to understand the evolution of the rave as beings that are actually distinct from humankind. We'll talk about the rave penta. Those of you in family or business penta, you're going to learn even more about penta. If you didn't think it was spooky before, you're going to see how spooky it is now because it's the key to the survival of the rave and how different the new rave will be. Ra's speculation was that they wouldn't even call it human, but how their survival hinges upon them being within their penta. And so this is one of the really important reasons why I wanted to start with 2027, because if you are a parent or a grandparent and you've got kids of childbearing age or who will be childbearing age, this may impact you directly. And I imagine, although there won't be tons of them, the, the rave coming through, I imagine that those of us who are trained to be able to help and support our fractal of people who are freaking out that their child, um, imagine autism, but worse, non-articulative period. So to be able to help, oh, I can feel that there's a lot of energy behind that. You know, we can't do this alone. But if we as an industry can get this information out into the hands of the world, people who are affected, it's going to make a huge difference to those grieving. And I mean grieving grandparents and parents and siblings and you know, anybody who's touched by somebody who has a rave born into their family. So the body graph 
is going to change. You're going to see that raves share the same body graph, but there's going to be strong distinctions or differences between a human body graph and a rave body graph. So the raves are not strategic besides just looking at the body graph. You're going to learn how the rave can exist without strategies and how to help support your clients when their family is hit by a rave baby. They won't know what hit them, but you can help. There's a unique circuitry that the rave will experience that that body graph. Only certain people will be able to communicate with a rave penta. Raves won't be able to be communicated with by their family. Isn't that sad? Not necessarily, unless they're a specific design. So Ra is going to share his view about the potential viability of the rave and its importance. You know, it is an evolution. Right now, autism, the autistics out there, they're not fully mutated. They're the lead in to the rave. So we're going to talk about the human pentas and rave pentas, the differences between these two unique pentas, because there is a difference. So our class will start next year with the Plutonian interregnum. In fact, um, I have just been invited to teach the Plutonic generations, and that might be something um, separate that uh, is available. But this right here, this one class, will help us understand in full the overview of the Plutonian interregnum. We'll talk about the transitional body graph and the solar plexus mutations one through four. You're, get, you're going to learn the design of rays, the autiv circuit, as well as the experiential and collective circuits, the material and binary circuits, and the individual circuit. So you see circuitry is there, but it's different in a rave. So you'll learn that. And we're going to talk about, again, the conscious penta that a rave will be able to create. Right now, all of us, you, me, everybody alive, when we're in human pentas, we are unconscious of their influence. It controls us unconsciously. The rave babies, when they come together, kind of like a like again, the science fiction movie of they will have a melding within their group penta and that's where they will find their fulfillment of purpose, giving over their individuality to a group. That is not what we humans can do. Not like the raves can, not by far. So we're going to learn about penta personalities there and talking about finding the bridge, the bridge between human and these rave pentas. Okay. If that was a little bit serious, my apologies. I don't mean to scare anybody, just that this is a very um, important role that someone needs to take up in order to get the word out there, the message across, because, you know, people are going to be freaking out. And Ra's prediction was that in most countries, those babies would be exposed, like back in the day before we had institutions. And that in our modern societies, you know, um, places where we have a lot of wealth, that those, thankfully, those penta babies would find their pentas or those rave babies would find their pentas within the institution, potentially. And that's something that we have yet to see. So next, we have individual service potentials. Not that you can't help people with the rave babies at some point. But I imagine that you're going to need to have more um, analyst training for that one. You can maybe introduce somebody. But let's say the design between uh, child development analyst training, as an example, if you go through analyst training and child development, then you'll be able to analyze the mother with the rave baby potentially, even though there won't be connectivity in the same way of communion or communication because the rave will not be able to talk, not like you and I talk or communicate. Um, so that might be something that's interesting for you at some point. But these other ones that we're looking at here, these other ones can all be individual services. So now it's time for the practical. And first, we're going to talk about 
the nature of the stars, which you can do, I like I mentioned, fixed star analysis, a mystical way analysis, being a death doula or helping um, assess the death, dying, and bardo process for someone if it's after the fact. And then uh, I tried for a while to get profile purpose and function as the first one off the ground, but nobody signed up for it. Um, I find this one to be the most important and practical out of all of these. If you're not very mystically focused or um, mis- do you don't have a, a mystical bone or bent, this one right here, it shows the true profile, so the unique way that you are here to fulfill your life's work. Profile is the most important thing for fulfilling one's life's work. You step into those great big archetypal shoes, and there are other words that we use to understand how profile works. So let's start over here with the nature of the stars. First, of course, finding one's fixed star. We're going to make sure that you're very clear on that and how to do it for a client as well. So we'll talk about the stars and the nodes. There are four great stars. Antares, cardinal stars, the end of the cross of planning era we'll talk about, the orchestrating principle and spika, the messenger of light, Rastaban, where wisdom is hiding, Octurius and the crystals of consciousness, and how Capella, the great nourisher, is dying. If you're interested in fixed stars, um, Bernadette Brady has an excellent book on stars as well to supplement your learning about this. And of course, we'll be going through all of Ra's material. So the role of neutrinos is also going to be covered here. And as far as what makes up the consciousness data stream or field that we're all processing. So we're going to learn how stars impact us both individually as well as collectively. And there's a little bit there to remind you about Supernotable 1987A, its relationship to human design. That's something that you might want to be able to put as a part of your lectures And then there's a timeline of key points in the ending of humanity's process. So dates, keynoting specific changes to our world as we know it is within this course. Now, this is one of my teacher's favorite courses. Whenever I think of Darshana, she's got her moon in 54-4 mystical most mystical of all lines and the mystical way is just the way that all of us are designed to walk our mystical path of awakening whether you have activations within this channel or um, gate construct the stream or not so you'll see that we have an introduction to the six mystical ways we're going to talk about individuality mutation and magic the mystical stream the six mystical pressures, part one and part two, the channel of communal ritual and tribal spirituality, mystical direction, and the nature of the mystical being, as well as the lines of the way. So the key here is that you're getting new keynotes and within the construct of being able to analyze a person's path along that way, This one, too, it would be very helpful to have some analyst background training. So this might be another one of those places where I add in a recording relative to helping those who are not in analyst training understand how to keynote core concepts to know as you start to weave keynotes together. Keynotes, remember, word formulas, phrases that unlock your genetic potential, the awareness of such to help guide people along their path of awakening if that's something that's really important to you. I know for me, my whole life, gathering books, you know, going to places, taking classes, always driven. Um, when I studied human design initially, I remember coming across a an astrologer who incorporated human design. He gave me my first um, Western reading. And he said, you have no mystical bones in your body as far as this piece. Yeah, I don't. 
But from the perspective of where my moon is, it's in 61. Yeah, my mental focus. So always about the great unknowable mysteries in life. And then discovering that where my moon placement is in Vedic is actually um, driven towards awakening. So no longer feeling bad because human design might not say that oh, I have the channel of awakening. I don't have the wisdom of that, though. Take that in, analyze it for you. It's one of the services that I would recommend that you get if you decide to take this course with me and get the package or you can do it for yourself up to you. I'm not going to limit you to what um, session you get with me. You can have any session you want relative to what I offer, okay? But from the perspective of the um, small business or large business, that one, those are off the table because that's multiple people, okay? So any only individual service and a full BG5 career design analysis is actually three sessions, so that counts as all three, if that's something that you want. Just letting you know that that's available with the package. Okay. Death, dying, and bardo time. If you've ever had anybody die in your life, oh, you know the, the pain of that, the loss. And to understand that there is something more beyond is quite comforting, you know, Um Understanding the nature of dying is really what we're going to be studying here. So incarnating, to get into carne. You know carne asada? It's meat, the flesh, incarnate and decarnating. It's something that I'm pretty sure I'm remembering it correctly. Um, something like 64,000 times we have incarnated on this planet. Um, not this planet, but in this uh, with this personality crystal, your soul incarnating. So as a human being, we're going to study the death, dying, and bardo process. First with the triggering of the dying sequence. What actually triggers the dying sequence? Hint, it's the moon. The moon that controls our incarnating and decarnating. We're going to talk about the dying process and the role of the monopole within that as well as where we have or when we have disengagement, the irreversible deterioration of the form. So let's imagine that you're going into being a death doula. If you're watching the cycles, you'll be able to know when the form has gone beyond its, its sell-by date. Sorry, that sounded horrible, but it's... um. Best Buy, it's time to go, you know, so to be able to let the family know that if they want to get fly here to be able to say goodbye, now's the time, that kind of thing. That can be very helpful. It can mean the difference between uh, a child who has been estranged saying goodbye or not. So the design crystal and the monopole, how those work, how they separate the bardo process itself 72 hours for bardo and what happens after death and that is bardo and how to ensure that the client's soul or spirit is actually picked up by its crystal bundle where it came from rather than wandering the earth as a um Rogue bundle, Ra would say. Rogue bundles get picked up, uh, pick up people that are just wandering the earth. So the modern book of the dead, we're also going to talk about how the wheel stops turning and the mechanics of a mystical death to ensure that if it's important to you, that you too get your bardo, your full bardo without uh, damage to the body to protect the form and then also to ensure that you return to your crystal bundle that you belong to. Okay, that was a heavy one. Death, uh, you know, I'm a 28. Um, my fulfillment of purpose, where I'm going to fulfill my purpose is in the realm of, yeah, the, where people have a fear of dying or fear of dying before they've achieved their purpose. And this right here, I feel, is something that can be very comforting to people relative to the death process. 
last class, my friends, we're going to be talking about profile purpose and function. And this one right here, maybe I picked it to go first initially because I'm like, ah, oh, that one's so easy and it's so helpful. But man, this one, I really feel that you're going to get a lot out of. So I have moved it up in the order of business. Um, from the perspective of profile, a deeper understanding than even what you got in um, my rave cartography and analyst training. So talking about the true profile, the understanding of your purpose. So class content, the drama of our profile or public role. Then we're going to go through each of the roles investigator, hermit, martyr, opportunist, heretic, and role model. And you're going to add on new keynotes that we're going to deconstruct and talk about archetypally so that you have more language to get these themes across to others. The mythological language oftentimes speaks very deeply to us, even if our conscious mind doesn't get it, something inside that's more ancient can. There's also going to be a segment on angels and demons. There we're going to talk about the rogue crystal bundles and entities and aliens and a story. So attuning to how you're designed to tune into the non-physical. You know how some people say, I see, I see dead people. <laughs> You know, those are our third colors, ghosts. So from the perspective of what happens, this one's really powerful besides that of how you're supposed to see things, what happens when you get transferred and instead you think you're a walk-in or an alien that actually uh, happened to somebody I know, whereas before she was deconditioned in the human design experiment. She thought she swore to God she was a walk-in. And then after deconditioning, she realized that, oh, it's just because she's a third color and attuning to ghosts is her thing. Okay. So from the perspective of all of the that material, again, um, these courses, when I teach it to you, I'm going to do my best to focus it in a practical and materially oriented way. Because Ra will give you all the detail in the ebooks and also um, if you listen to the audio. I can't come up with anything really new other than whatever I've encountered in my process, you know, as a personal share or a story, you know, with death or rave babies or what have you at some point. So, what my aim is with this cosmology program is to ensure that you are properly equipped to take advantage of whichever one of these courses really lights you up particularly so that you can start to make a profit off of this with your fractal, with the people that you're here to serve. So it's adding on different service offerings that you can give to your clients if you're already um, either in the analyst training or you are planning to become an analyst. This is a great place to branch off into if you are interested. If any of this lit you up in curiosity or you could imagine yourself um, working with the information in this way. Okay, so I don't want anybody to get into this without knowing what they're getting into. It's only an hour lecture. One hour every week. For either 10 or 11 weeks, if I have to add on an extra week, I will. But from the perspective of the time constraint, it is going to be an hour lecture for the most part and not anything more. Um, so that is the expectation. And there's going to be four of these next year and three the following year. So we'll do them in sequence, which can change. From the certification standpoint, remember... All of those seven courses finished, and then the final certification course plus prerequisites will result in the teacher certification. So I do know that they don't teach that final course very often, and currently it's not scheduled on the website. But if it does come up in the next year, 
or two. And even though you haven't taken all of the courses yet, I'll tell you, I would recommend if you want to get certified, you don't have to get the certification. Okay. But if you do want to get certified, grab that course and then just don't turn in your homework immediately. You'll just delay your homework until you're ready to go. And if you do finish your homework, let's say we already covered um, the mystical way, you turn in a mystical analysis, but you haven't finished your final courses with me. When you finish your final courses, then Darshana will give you your certification. So you can do this final course at any time in the next couple years. It's actually kind of a nice thing that they did recently. They opened it up to anybody, not just people who had finished all the courses because it's a very specialized area of the knowledge. What it did was it gave people a taste of all of the courses first, like a review or overview, depending on where you're at in your certification program. Okay. So again, that is not included in the package with me because I'm not in charge of that. So we're going to start with mechanics of the rave, and then we'll do profile purpose and function. Mystical ways and nature of the stars. And then in January of 2025, the bond two, May 2025, dying death and bar. Bardo, and then we'll finalize with Brahma's Long Night and beyond. We're creating new presentations as we go. Really beautiful, credible presentations. And I really look forward to going through this with you if it's something that you're interested in. So just letting you know, you can sign up at any time. There's no time pressure, no deadline. Even if you decide in a year from now that you want to sign up with us, you can buy the full package and get these as a recording. And of course, I'll be available for any communion that you want to have with me inside of our course area, humandesign.live. So that is the end of our presentation. I'm curious if you have any questions about anything relative to signing up. I'd be happy to help you, mentor you. As you know, Lavina loves mentoring and it's one of my most hmm, favorite imaginations. When I hear somebody in the professional training really getting it for themselves, I know they've been hit, hit, hit or bit by the bug and that they're out there doing the work, just imagining you out there doing the work too, really warms me inside to be able to know the effects of this far-reaching material, the course material that you too will be taking out and teaching. So relative to where might you be teaching it, there's all kinds of you know, institutions and places where you could give an introductory talk, you know, and be able to get the word out there about whatever it is that lights you up inside. Again, remember, just because the human design system is so huge, you don't have to do everything that we're teaching you about, just like in analyst training. You know, I give you all kinds of keynotes. Here's memory circuit and here's Tantra and here's, oh, now we're going to add on the mystical way and here's the material way and all that stuff. You don't have to do all of it, but just to know how comprehensive and deep the system is and that it's very easy to go and look up things because of the materials. And you'll now have additional resources when you take this course with us because you're going to get handouts as usual and videos and, of course, a community of people like you who are seeking and now have found something that they know to be true inside of them and however it is that the human design system mutates you and allows you to shine as your own bright light in this darkening universe by verse, I honor the nature of being on this journey with you. Much love to each of you, whether you join us now or in the future. Take care, my friends, and bye for now.